Okay, so what we're going to look at first is the spread of the data. Okay, whoops, down there. So basically that's the top value and that's the bottom value and we're going to look at this value here. So that's 2800 at the top and this is 2000 here, 2100. So that's going to be 1900, yeah? So the difference there is what? Someone said it, come on. 900. Okay, so it's 900 and these are millions. So 900, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So that is our range of raw data. Okay, so we use that as the denominator of our fraction. Now let's have a look at the trend. So the range of the trend is this. Okay, so that's going from, this here's 2, 6, and uh, so I've got 2, 6, 2 zeros, minus, and I'm going to call that, if that here was um, 1900, uh, what are we going to call it, 1950. So what's that, can somebody tell me? Thank you. Did I hear 650? And again, it's actually millions. Okay. So the range of the trend, so we're going to have our trend is our 650, and we happen to know it's millions. And we're dividing that by the range of the raw data. Can someone do that on the calculator to give us? A percentage. So you're going to go 650 divided by 900, 72 percent. Now let's just do the the checking. Uh, okay. So, but because we've read the numbers off the graph, we're going to say approximately 70 percent because we're kind of doing a bit of a rule of thumb here. And does that look about correct? Yeah, more or less. Okay. So we've got 70 percent of the variation in the data is coming from the trend. Okay, let's have a look at seasonality. This bit here we can read it off because this is the repeated um, seasonal pattern. That's going down to 100 minus uh, under the trend and here it's 200 over the trend. So this range is 300. So we're going to go uh, for our seasonality, we're going to go 300, and it will also be million. million. Oh, these have, was I right with the right number of zeros here? That could be interesting. 300 over? 30. What am I putting on the bottom? 900. Okay, so that becomes... 33%. So they're not quite adding up, are they? Because what's the other one? Residuals. So the residuals here, very interesting, the maximum residual is this one. So I only look at that maximum residual, and that looks at about, uh, I'm going to call it 50. I might be a little bit wrong. And down the bottom is 50. So I'm going to go 50 over the 900. What's that? 0 0.05, so what does that become? 5%. So just roughly, I've got 5%, I've got 35%, and I've got 72%, and that's adding up to? 100 and... Yeah, so it hasn't add, added to 100%. There's three sources of variation, your seasonality, your residuals, and your trend. But when we do it this way, they're not going to actually add to 100. Um, but if it's kind of ballpark, that's okay. So basically what you're saying is that most of the variation comes from the trend. Then you've got the remainder being seasonality and residuals. Here the residuals are small. Okay, they are a lot less 
than your 10%. So do we have to show these calculations? It's kind of easier to go with the calculations and just um, be very aware that they are ballpark. That well, for merit, you need to show actual, yeah, you do need to show your calculations or the result of your calculations. I mean, like, yeah. So can we, can we just say, oh, the, um, the, the raw data um, range is 900. So to finish, if we go the range of the raw data, and that was from here to here, and we put that number there, and then we have trend, you can have the lowest and the highest and the range and the percent will then be the range divided by the raw data range, if that makes sense. And then you'll go seasonality and you'll have its, um, so from the negative 100 to the I'm going to say 150, so the range becomes 250, and the percent will be the 250 over whatever this range here is. That's the range of the raw data. So range of raw data. So you go that divided by that equals times 100, you get the percent. Does that make sense? And then the last one is the residuals. So with the residuals, you look for your maximum residual, and you just use that. So you don't use the full range. Okay, you just look at the maximum error. And then you go that maximum error divided by the range of the raw data to get your percent. So you could, for um, merit, you can actually consolidate this. I mean, obviously you'll have a nicer, neater table than that. And just have... Um, you could actually just have variable 1 and variable 2 and actually just do the calculations straight off if you're confident you're not going to make a mistake or, you know, do the table longer. It's your call how much working you need to show. I would show the working so I can check my working easier because I'm prone to making stupid mistakes. But it's your call on your accuracy.